Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you guys would like to see a test that I ran comparing full length size load development versus neck only size load development in my 6.5 Creedmoor Ruger precision rifle, stick around. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you'd like to learn what loads work best for me, the tools that I use to make my group smaller, subscribe to the channel and leave your feedback in the comment section below to help me and the rest of the community here improve our load development. Guys, in this week's video, we're talking strictly about the comparison load test that I ran between full length size brass and neck only size brass. Now, before everybody starts fighting in the comment section below, I will say I do not think this is the end all test to end all test. I don't think that anyone needs to specifically change their load procedure based on this test. However, I would like to present a fair video comparing the two processes to see if one really is better than the other in my rifle. And I realize this is only one test and that more testing will probably need to be ran. I thought this was good information and that some people would be interested. So please try and keep an open mind. That being said, let's do a quick overview of what we're actually testing today. The load we're testing today is the identical lot of brass of 50 pieces. This was all once fired brass. 25 pieces were then full length size with my match grade die. And then 25 pieces were neck only size with my type S bushing die from Redding. The test vehicle we're using for today's video is the 142 grain Sierra hollow point boat tail, part number 1742, loaded behind reloader 16. If you would like to know the full details on this load development, I'll put a card up on your screen and you go back and watch that video. In that video, I give this identical load workup with the samples that I use that from the full length sizing die. Probably one of the number one comments that I get on my channel is telling me that I need to be neck only sizing and not full length sizing. Guys, to each and to their own, again, I'm not telling anyone to change your thing. The research that I have done points me in the direction that full length sizing for my application is the most reasonable thing to do. You may not agree, and that's fine. Please neck only size if that's what works for you. I'm not going to kill you guys with references because basically if this was a nine hour video, nobody would watch it anyway, but I'm going to at least give you guys a quick snippet. I've mentioned this book before. One of the things that I read is Glenn Zedeker's book, Hand Loading for Competition. One of the sections of this book specifically talks about neck only sizing versus full length sizing. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you. Let's just go over a couple things. Again, according to Zedeker, not myself, under most circumstances, there is no accuracy advantage in neck only sizing. Zedeker also describes that neck only sizing resolves mostly around misunderstandings of the utility and purpose of this method. Neck only sizing is not done to improve the case body or the rifle's chamber's fit or a more snug fit it in itself does not improve accuracy. The idea that a tighter fit improves accuracy falls under the heading of flawless illogic. It sounds reasonable, but it isn't so. To keep it short and sweet, I thoroughly encourage anyone to get a hold of this book and read one for itself. And again, I'm not going to say that Glenn Zedeker is the end all to end all either. However, he does have some good information and I believe that he is largely regarded as a good source of information by the reloading community. Another thing that I might bring up to you guys, some people also mention that by full length sizing, I'm wearing out my brass. I haven't had to discard very many of my cartridges yet. The more I research, the more I find that I don't really find a whole lot of people complaining about 6.5 Creedmoor cartridges with split necks. They're complaining about 6.5 Creedmoor cartridges with loose primer pockets. The failure mechanism for 6.5 Creedmoor seems to be those large rifle primer pockets opening up far before the actual brass necks wear out. Again, this is for information only. Don't base your reloading decisions on my opinions. So if I haven't outlined it only, guys, basically, for this test, this is the identical same load of Hornady brass. Once fired, 25 pieces were neck only sized, 25 pieces were full length sized. This is the same identical workup as last week, and we'll put a comparison of the data on the screen so everyone can decide for themselves. So for this load workup, again, we used the 140 grain Sierra Match King with reloader 16. We loaded from 40 grains to 43.5 grains. The primer we used is a CCI 250. The cartridge overall length was Sierra's recommended 2.810 inches. One thing important of note, all of these were sized with the match grade bushing. And then I used my Sinclair mandrel die to set the necks at the appropriate dimension. Guys, the estimated velocity is going to be a combination of calculated between what Sierra's data told us and some information we'd ran through quick load. Starting off with the full length and following with the neck only length, at 40 grains, our estimated velocity had been 2594 or 2645. 
Our actual velocity was 2589, standard deviation of 11.6, extreme spread of 29, and a 0.525 MOA group. With a neck only size at our same estimated velocity, but an actual velocity of 2610, standard deviation of 10, extreme spread of 28, and a 0.628 MOA group. At 41.3 grains, our estimated velocity was 2670, or 2720, our actual velocity was 2667, standard deviation of 9.1, extreme spread of 24, and a 0.820 MOA group. With the neck only size, same estimated velocity, actual velocity was 2681, standard deviation of 15.4, extreme spread of 33, and a 1.264 MOA group. At 42.5 grains, Estimated velocity went to 2741 or 2790. The actual velocity was 2751. Standard deviation of 7.6, extreme spread of 21, a 1.140 MOA group. The neck only size brass of the same group, uh, same estimated velocity with the actual velocity achieved was 2770. Standard deviation of 10.7, extreme spread of 28, 1.062 MOA group. At 43 grains, estimated velocity of 2770, or 2820, actual velocity was 2794, standard deviation of 16.7, extreme spread of 40, with a 1.170 MOA group. On the neck only size brass, same estimated velocity, however, actual velocity was 2810, standard deviation of 19.8, extreme spread of 48, a 1.083 MOA group. At our max charge of 43.5 grains, our estimated velocity was either 2800 or 2848, our actual achieved velocity was 2837, standard deviation of 9.8, extreme spread of 22, but a 0.909 MOA group. With our neck only size brass, our actual velocity achieved was 2838, standard deviation of 12.2, extreme spread of 31, and a 0.744 MOA group. Now guys, when push comes to shove, this really isn't enough data to make a life-altering decision. However, I do think some point, general points can be taken from it there's probably not a gigantic difference between these two load workups. Obviously using the identical materials, same lots of bullets, powder, brass, primers, everything as identical as we could possibly be, the results are honestly very close. To say there's one significant advantage over another would likely be highly irresponsible. Though obviously some groups were slightly smaller, though the full length sizing group on the lower stand had the smallest group, the neck only size group was slightly better on the highest charge. When looking at the data in generalities, the standard deviations were actually typically better on the full length size brass. The extreme spreads were typically lower on the full length size brass versus the neck only. I'm not sure that there's enough data here to make a drastic decision that one is drastically better than the other. What I do think is very interesting that largely you find the same results. Though the, the 41.3 grain charge is slight, the group size is slightly different, you still see the same trend. You get the best group at 40 grains. That group tends to get larger and it gets smaller again. I'm not going to go through this data with a fine tooth comb and tell you exactly the way you should see it. I think everyone should be able to look at it themselves and decide for themselves. For me guys, I don't see anything that's going to keep me using my neck only size die all the time. I think for function and seeing as one of the weakest points in the 6.5 Creedmoor is the primer pockets loosening up far before you see any split necks. The full length size and die is probably going to keep its full time job on my reloading bench, at least for the time being. I'm not going to tell you that I'm not going to use my neck only die. I'll probably run some more tests in the future, but I did think at least for this load workup that it was a respectable comparison between the two dies and seeing that the differences when it came to groups and statistics was not that significantly different. Guys, like I always say, this is kind of a conversation. Please post your comments below. The only thing I do ask, at least try and keep the comments in the comment section below constructive. There's a lot of people out there with a lot of opinions and that they're hard and fast with. I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm just running these tests and I'm making my own decisions based on the results that I get on my reloading bench with my rifle. And it would be the same exact way that I would expect you to make the results with your own. Like I always do, I put a shot of the brass on the screen. Really nothing to see here, no scary pressure signs or anything like that. Like I always say, make your own decisions. You gotta follow your own process and make your own decisions based on your own applications. So guys, all that out of the way, I'd really like to know what you guys think of today's video. Did you like the results? Did you think they were interesting? Did you think it was even a test worth running? Really interested to know what you guys think in the comments below. And if you guys don't think I did a fair job testing this out, let me know what you guys would change in your testing. I'm certainly open to not running another test comparing these two dies performance. 
but I really don't know exactly what that will be. Anyway, thank you guys to all my subscribers. Thank you for all the new subscribers. Thank you for the old ones that are coming back. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell notifications so you'll get more of the content like this. If you like the video, please hit the like button. I'm sure I'm going to win the dislike record for all my videos on this, but I thought the data was interesting, and I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And like I say every week, guys, thanks for watching today's video, and until next week, stay safe in small groups.